Hi, welcome to this Tuesday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Today is Read Across Jamaica Day. So before retiring to bed, we encourage you to read something. It could be your Bible, an old literature book, or today's paper. Knowledge is power, and that's improved by strengthening the mind with information. Between the pages, libraries still offer much for the imagination, and today we highlight the impact of the St. Elizabeth Parish Library. It's Child Month, so we suggest a nutritious idea for their tummies. Stay with us for those features and more. On our roads, remember, take time, be courteous, drive good, walk good. Part of keeping our roads safe is ensuring the vehicles we drive are mechanically safe, meeting all roadworthy requirements. And besides that, we must be good drivers and avoid risk-taking and sensation-seeking behaviors which are prone to causing road crashes. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez, and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, May 9. 130,000 unattached youth will benefit from Monday's launch of the employment aspect of the Housing Opportunities Production Employment HOPE program. The Andrew Holness-led initiative will be coordinated by Colonel Martin Rickman, who has been seconded from the Jamaica Defence Force. He will be surveying and coordinating all of government to seek out opportunities for youngsters to be engaged. Colonel Rickman will be assisted by liaison officers in the various ministries, agencies and departments of government. The program will be managed under a National Apprenticeship Framework. This framework will lead to a revision of the old National Apprenticeship Act to make provision for youth 18 to 24 years old. We're going through every ministry, every agency, every department. What are the critical things that you need to get done? The HOPE program will identify the youngsters give them the necessary skills, bring them under an apprenticeship framework and set them to work in building a better, more efficient Jamaican public service. Citizens in St. Elizabeth have been assured that government has no intention of taking their properties. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says the administration only wants to collect property taxes so that the necessary services can be provided for the country. The minister was addressing residents of the parish during the first stop on a property tax sensitization tour last week. St. Elizabeth has one of the lowest rates of property tax compliance in the country. You can pay your property taxes now like how you pay, like how you, you take out a purchase. You know, we, we are not averse if a man who owes $20,000 of property taxes and him can only pay a thousand dollars a week. We welcome the thousand dollars a week. We're not going to turn that away. We, we want to encourage persons to pay property taxes. So that is why we are using this approach towards educating, informing, and advising the country about property taxes. The property tax sensitization tour will next stop in Manchester before heading to Clarendon. Garbage collection on the island has been bolstered with the addition of three new trucks to the National Solid Waste Management Authority's fleet. The trucks, valued at $60.2 million, were handed over earlier today by local government minister Desmond McKenzie. They'll be dispatched to St. Elizabeth, Portland and the Kingston metropolitan area. This brings to nine the number of units received since the start of the year. A total of 28 garbage trucks will be delivered in the 2017-2018 financial year. I'm giving the country the assurance that between now and the end of the next financial year, we are going to be making arrangements to find the funds to purchase an additional 15 trucks to complement what is presently on order to come in to the stock for the National Solid Waste Management Authority. The Ministry of Health has signed two contracts to address ventilation issues at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton made the disclosure during a tour of the facility on Friday. The first contract has secured a project manager who will oversee the project through to completion over the next year. They're very experienced. They would bring in personnel as required. And part of that project management is going to be the assessment of 
the infrastructure, particularly as it relates to plumbing, electrical, um, the building itself in terms of leaks and so on. Uh, they are also going to be playing a role in uh, looking at process flow, workflow. Dr. Tufton says the project management team will also be renovating some of the buildings currently unoccupied and conducting maintenance training to avoid any recurrence. The second contract will see an engineering firm designing a new custom-built ventilation system. And finally, Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed has expressed confidence in the Early Childhood Commission's work to improve results in the education system. Minister Reed was speaking with JIS News as the island celebrated Reed Across Jamaica Day. He read to students at the Alpha Infant and Fundaciones Kingston schools earlier today. For Jamaica to compete in this new global age, the fourth industrial revolution, when we want all our children to move into higher education, we have to make sure that the foundation is strong. The foundation and cornerstone of the education system is the ability to read. We have been told so often that, you know, Jamaica don't like to read. And so again, we have to now encourage through Read Across Jamaica Day the efficacy, the great benefits of children um, reading, learning to read, loving reading. Read Across Jamaica was celebrated under the theme Literacy Matters, Read Aloud, Promote Collaboration and Confidence in Jamaica. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thank you for watching. Want to know the law pertaining to renting a house? What about the procedure if you're arrested? Or what is defined as corruption? Then click on the Ministry of Justice website. It has information on every law passed in Jamaica. The House of Parliament portal also has the more recent year's pieces of legislation. The sites are easy to search and the files are downloadable. Make access to justice your business. Know your rights. From being inducted into the UWI Honor Roll to kicking off a series of island-wide town halls and breaking ground for 150 service lots at Birds Hill Clarendon, Prime Minister Andrew Holness had several news-making assignments this past week. Here are the details next. I am very, very humbled by this honor. This is another good afternoon for Jamaica. And? These town hall meetings are about empowering the people of Jamaica. Prime Minister Andrew Holness became the 18th inductee into the University of the West Indies Honor Park last Wednesday. Established in 2005, the park honors UWI alumni who are current or former heads of government. Mr. Holness used the induction ceremony to share his thoughts on how tertiary education can be funded. If we are going to expand tertiary education, then the subsidy may have to shift from the fees to a subsidy for financing, meaning that you have to make it easier and more accessible for students to finance the education rather than to give a subsidy for fees. During a rap session with UWI Mona Campus students Wednesday, Prime Minister Holness said his administration was considering legislation to govern how national examinations were conducted. The proposal is due to the numerous complaints that continue to be lodged with the Ministry of Education. The government has a role and probably should intervene because many of these exams lead to national certification and, and we need to be able to verify that they have gone through a process that is standard, that is fair and transparent. The Prime Minister said a policy on national examinations would first be developed in order to guide the proposed legislation. While at the UWI Mona campus, Mr. Holness also received a tour of the Medical Sciences Building. He was updated on the groundbreaking work of the lab, the School of Dentistry and the Sports Medicine Clinic. The Prime Minister also visited his former dorm room on Chancellor Hall, where the study room was renamed in his honor. 
On Thursday, Mr. Holness journeyed to Ocho Rios for the first in a series of island-wide town hall meetings. He told the residents that over $4 billion would be spent this year on expanding the cruise ship promenade, building out the Reynolds Pier, constructing an artisan village, and upgrading the Ocho Rios market. We are not doing that for tourists because tourists don't want to come to an artificial attraction. Tourists want to come and see the genuine, real thing of how we live as a people. And we want to show the world that as a people, we live in class and style. By Friday, the Prime Minister was in Clarendon breaking ground for the latest National Housing Trust development in the parish. Phase 1 of the $593 million Chateau Gardens housing development at Birds Hill will see the build-out of 150 service lots. Mr. Holness reaffirmed the government's commitment to providing housing for Jamaicans. That we are not going to countenance or continue the haphazard development of our country that we must build housing solutions that are affordable, but that match the dignity of the people who want to own and live in them. While in Clarendon, the Prime Minister met with residents affected by recent flood rains and viewed work government was undertaking to expand the drainage network in the area. He pledged the government's commitment to returning normality to affected communities. And the SDC has already been in the area along with local government doing the assessment to, uh, and, and the MNSF. Minister of Social Security um, to see what the damage would be. There is uh, damage to agriculture, livestock, um, there is some economic damage. People have lost their stalls, their goods, and there is general household damage. People have lost their refrigerator, they have lost their beds. So we're going to try and assist. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says his government will continue to have an open-door policy towards journalists. Mr. Holness's comments came as the island observed World Press Freedom Day on May 3. The Prime Minister said the state had put in place various protocols and approaches to build a strong partnership with the media and ensure that the country is always kept informed. He said those approaches had led to Jamaica's improved standing of eighth globally on the World Press Freedom Index. The Prime Minister urged journalists to continue to be fair, balanced and responsible as these factors have built the trust of the Jamaican people. Prime Minister Holness also received guests at Jamaica House this past week. On Tuesday, he was joined by a delegation from AIM Educational Services. Later that day, he met with the swimmers representing Jamaica at the Carifta Games. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. We return next time with more of the news coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. No son, a verb is an action word. Parents need to become more involved in their children's education. Parents are the first and in many cases the most important teachers. Read with your children, review their schoolwork, visit their school. Tapping and rapping and slapping, I said. Nice, high five. Woo. <laughs> A good education will never decay. On this Read Across Jamaica Day, we put the focus on the work of the St. Elizabeth Parish Library. They've embarked on a number of initiatives such as a reading competition. Watch this. Balaclava, Eldersley, Junction, Louisville, Malvern, Nain, Red Bank, Santa Cruz, Southville, War Minister Branch Libraries, and the St. Elizabeth Parish Library. It was roll call time for the finalists in the National Reading Competition Parish Finals of the St. Elizabeth Parish Library Network. Five age groups vying for varied prizes as well as an opportunity to represent their parish at the national finals. 
the National Reading Competition seeks to promote good reading habits, cultivate an appreciation of books, and foster continuing education in adults. The National Reading Competition is a flagship program of the Jamaica Library Service. The competition started in 1988 as part of the organization's 40th anniversary celebrations. They are encouraged to read as many books as possible, but there's a minimum of six books that the children have to read. A total of 97 competitors from all public libraries within the network participated in the competition. The competition started with the six to eight age group. Why did Grand and Nanny like the name Nancy? Sandra Cruz, Branch Library. Because it reminded her of the character Anansi, the tricky spider. Thank you very much, that is correct. Where did Grand and Nanny say she was from? Red Bank? Africa. Okay, yes, thank you very much. Nine finalists were present for the 9 to 11 age group. So your individual question is going to be taken from Number the Stars. How old was Ellen at the beginning of the story? Ten. Thank you, that's correct. What nickname did Anne Marie and Ellen give to the tall soldier? Gerald. Thank you very much. And the 12 to 14 age group certainly showed off their mental ability skills. Who was Mr. Craven's housekeeper? Mrs. Medlock. Yes, it is. For how many years was the garden locked up? 10 years. You're correct. And it came down to two entrants for the adult categories. At the end, the winners were well rewarded. This yearly event continues to inspire children to become voracious readers and boost literacy standards. Additionally, the competition creates a link between school and home to encourage the involvement of parents to support children. Jamaica Library Service once again underscores the relevance of public libraries through the provision of a wide range of programs and services to all age groups across Jamaica. And through the Global Libraries Initiative, several state-of-the-art ICT resources were installed in 119 public libraries, including the St. Elizabeth Parish Network. I'd like to invite members of the public to come in and benefit from our newly installed computers. Currently, we have introduced our digital literacy training, which is for persons who already have basic computer skills. And basic computer training for persons from as young as four years old up to senior citizens. Through the project, an advocacy committee was established at the St. Elizabeth Parish Library. The library on a whole is a life-saving institution that is geared towards the development of not only the human as it is, but the community and the country on a whole. Students are certainly enjoying the benefits of the enhanced library offerings. When I come here, the internet is fast and reliable and I have many places to search from. So I rarely leave from here with an assignment undone. And I usually finish my assignments fast, so maybe I take the time to play a game or two. I come here often, you know, I read books, I, it increases my vocabulary, so I speak very well and my friends kind of call me a dictionary because I know so many words. In the next feature, we once again look at how students are benefiting from the Jamaica Library Service's exciting programs when we share the summer program at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Library. We're still celebrating Read Across Jamaica Day and went into our archives for this gem. A catchy reminder of the importance of reading.
express love to my children not just by giving them material things but helping them to understand love itself teaching them about life and showing them how to express love to other people yeah by keeping him safe that's all I show my love to him keeping him safe from any harm or danger. Every child need a parent near, so spending time would give them all the love that they want because they need a parent near. By making them happy, give them what they need. I want to express love to my child now. You don't know, say, you have to talk to them, check on them and make sure so they're all right, hug them and thing, and tell them, say, you love them, basically, you understand? May is Child Month. Treat your child by stocking the fridge with a few boxes of real milk. See now why it's good for them. Hazelnut brown, white, spotted, horns or not, they produce that nutritious substance which makes strong bones and teeth. There is a drive on to have Jamaicans drinking more local cow's milk. For the last few decades, the consumption of Jamaica's cow's milk has declined significantly. The annual production of local milk has dropped from 600 farmers producing 38.8 million liters in 1992 to less than 200 farmers supplying approximately 12 million liters in 2015. At the same time, the consumption of milk and milk substitutes account for more than 60 million liters annually, 90% of it imported. That's what we were able to say, but I don't think it was really a glut. It was the importation of the cheap milk powder. I am more the milk powder doesn't have to be refrigerated. They were overlooking the nutritional value of cow's milk. The decline in local milk consumption has affected several areas, causing a high import bill and a decline in employment opportunities. 
experience them milk a whole cola and I'm talking about like 300 gallons of milk. And you have to just run it down the drain like that. And when you throw the milk, you still have to pay the workers, still have to pay electricity, still have to pay all your bills. Because you can't go to nobody or tell you have to throw the milk. It also affects the cows, as the decline in consumption causes fewer milking sessions, forcing the breasts to become painful from an excess of milk. Despite the perils of the industry, there are farmers who refuse to be cowed by the appeal of cheaper imports. Oral Wallace is one such farmer who has put his life on the line to stay in the dairy business. It was started in about 1969 by my father, Mr. Rupert Wallace, and my mom, Miss Panzi Wallace. They bring it up to about the year 2000 when I took over, for about 2002. The major challenge for dairy farmers, I think, is period lasting. Because at night I can't sleep. I have to be up there. They make after me two times, I think, I think about within about three months period. And they came with their guns, but I had to took over and afterward they were evaded. Milk industry, it's basically you have to be a lover of daring to be in it because the dairy industry is not an easy road. Gulping the white substance to the last sip will be a daily routine for every Jamaican if these entities have their way. Four companies have formed a partnership to revive the island's dairy industry under what's called the Drink Real Milk campaign. The government-owned Jamaica Dairy Development Board, CB Group through its subsidiary Nutrimix, Separate Limited with its Surge Island Dairies, and Newport for San Jamaica Limited have come together to increase the production and consumption of Jamaican milk over the next 10 years. The target is to produce 20 million liters annually. And the industry itself was really degenerating quite significantly. It's, it's a cause for, co for concern for everybody. The partners aim to overall the industry on two levels, production and consumption. The production strategy seeks to improve access to better genetic material, enhance animal health, and institute customized feeding programs and proper pasture management. The Jamaica Dairy Development Board has stepped in boldly to help in this area. The Dairy Sector Revitalization Project, flagship project or activity is, is the, um, the concessionary loan program where we, farmers have difficulty in accessing loans at reasonable rates. So we have, we have instituted a program where we, we allow farmers um, funds, loans, through the Jamaica Dairy Development, um, um, the DBJ, Development Bank of Jamaica and its affiliates, um, where farmers can access loans at the rate of 5%, which is quite competitive. There's a 5 million threshold for the individual um, borrower. And for uh, corporate entities, it's 10 million. The Dairy Board has also committed more than $20 million to deal with Prairie Larceny in partnership with the Agriculture Ministry. On the consumption side, the campaign seeks to encourage purchasing of fresh locally produced milk to support the island's farmers, promoting the health benefits of drinking milk and sharing additional benefits of drinking cow's milk versus powdered milk. Over the past few years, milk has been a little bit quiet and so everyone else, all the milk substitutes have been in your face and telling you, oh, you know, you should drink us instead. But the reality is there is nothing like real milk and what we're trying to get people to understand as well is drink Jamaican real milk. Once you let the people aware the nutritional values of it, it will go right back up. I was almost born on a farm and from I've born I've been drinking cow's milk and do I look sick? Not at all. <laughs> Supporting the local milk industry provides jobs, increases the country's economic wealth and nourishes our bodies. Persons interested in entering dairy farming may contact the Jamaica Dairy Development Board at 618-7107 or 927-1731-50. This is where we close the magazine for today. But there's a lot more to see and read on our webpage, jis.gov.jm. There you may find relevant information on government projects and policies. 
For more television features, visit our YouTube channel. We're also on other social media sites or you may download our app from the Google Play Store to stay informed while you're on the go. Have a wonderful evening. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank <laughs> you.